Hi, I'm Jade Level, you're watching PsyQ, and today we're talking about stuff that science got wrong. Breakfast is not the most important meal of the day. Vaccines do not cause autism. Talking to people on their doorstep is unlikely to change their opinion of gay marriage, and eating cholesterol-laden food like eggs and bacon is unlikely to affect your health. No. These are just some of the things that science has got wrong in recent years. And, you know, we kind of expect science to be wrong sometimes. With thousands of studies being published every year, there's got to be a small margin of error. That's kind of to be expected. But recently, the annual rate of retractions by scientific journals has increased by more than tenfold, which means this is not a small margin of error, but a huge problem in the sciences. So how do we get it so wrong? Well, in a study of over 2,000 biomedical and life science articles that were retracted, about one in five were retracted because of some sort of error. And, you know, that's kind of to be expected. But what's scary is that over two thirds were retracted because of some form of scientific misconduct, including fraud, suspected fraud, or just making the numbers up. I can delete that dot because that's clearly a measurement error. And we know that's a measurement error because it's messing up my data. <laughs> this is a real problem. A 2009 meta-analysis of retracted papers found that one in three scientists confessed to questionable scientific practices, which can include anything from dropping data points based on gut feeling to plagiarism. Scientists also confessed to changing the design, methodology, or results of a study based on pressure from funding sources. Changing results based on pressure from funding sources? That's not science, that's fraud. The question is, if science is a field that prides itself on getting it right, then how can we get it so wrong so often? Science itself is based on the idea that we are advancing knowledge, we're not making stuff up, and we're not dropping data points based on our feelings. We're supposed to be getting it right. My opinion is there's a difference between what science claims to be and what science really is. Science claims to be a field where we get it right, we advance scientific knowledge, we don't make things up based on our feelings. And yet, in the real world, science is influenced by so many non-objective factors, not the least of which is money. Pressure from funding sources can influence results, but it can also affect what we're investigating in the first place. Obviously, scientists are going to go into fields where there are grants to be had and not try and investigate something that might be more important but less well-funded. Scientists are also influenced by career funding. Obviously, if you get published more, you're more likely to get a good job and the salary that goes along with it. Publication bias has been a well-documented issue for over 30 years, and as long as scientists' careers are based on how often they get published and journals accept papers, papers based on results, then scientists are going to be pressured to produce results when maybe there aren't any. The whole field of science needs to recognize that we're addicted to narrative. We all want to be that scientist that cures cancer, that finds a new thing. Yet the vast majority of science is simply investigating things, where we might find a negative result and we might find a positive result. We need to be able to reconcile what science should be with the pressures that are on scientists today to prove results. And until we can reconcile those two things, the retractions are only going to keep coming. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching PsyQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.